If you are looking to explore the water, this ROV drone is for you. Welcome back to the channel guys, this is Paul and today we are going to take a look at the Chasing Gladius Mini S ROV drone. Alright, so this is what came in the box. This is the whole unit here and they give you this nice case right here. Actually it's a backpack and it's by Chasing of course. This is a very good size backpack. It houses everything in here, so your controller, your ROV, uh, the cables, they're all in here. Uh, the top portion is where you'll find the controller and the charger, and then the bottom portion is where the ROV is at and the cables. So let's take a look at this, and I'll go through the top portion here. Alright, so that's how it looks like right here. Controller, the charger. All right, put this down. All right, so this charger is a standard charger, nothing special about this, but it comes with this splitter right here. And this splitter will ensure that you can charge both the ROV and the controller at the same time. So that's how it looks like. It's got the little splitter. And one thing to note here, there's actually an LED indicator right here at the very top here. It will light up in red when charging and green when the charge is complete. So there is no indicator on the drone itself. So the only way to know if you're fully charged if, is if you pay attention to this right here. All right, so we have the power supply that it comes with and the controller looks something like this this is the controller it's got this piece at the top for your phone or your ipad okay so it's got the basic controls your toggles up here buttons turning it on here and we'll go with that we'll test that out in a bit here but that's how you turn it on at the very top you'll see it's got the controllers it's got these two dials up here it's got this that connects to the drone HDMI out and USB-C to connect to your mobile device alright so it comes with extra seals as well so you want to check your connector just to make sure the seal is still good and it's not broken or missing otherwise it could damage the unit and the communication between both devices some of the other things that you get would be these cables here here's one here this is the iPhone to USB-C cable. Then you also have the USB-C to USB-C cable and also a USB-C to a USB micro cable. Um, that is for connecting your phone directly to the controller. Again, that is back here. This USB slot right here. You can connect your phone directly to this unit here or connect it via the Wi-Fi option. It also comes with this shroud here. And this shroud is good to protect the screen from glares. So that's good to have. These four screws here, they are to tighten the claw onto the drone. And here's an optional accessory to attach a GoPro to the bottom of that drone. Lastly, this is a special cable needed to connect the claw to the drone itself that way you can control it through the controller so it does come with this guy right here very long sleeve and with that is the actual claw so there's a claw right here and this is what you want if you want to have some fun under the water and start retrieving goodies from the water all right you have your manuals of course in case you need to read through it, it's there. Comes with a special cloth here to dry your drone after it gets wet. So that's what that's for. All right. The tether cable comes in 100 meter. They do have the 50 meter or the 200 meter option, but this is the one I got here with this little case here to wind the cable around. 
and this cable is a special cable it's got some buoyancy to it so when you throw it in the water it floats there's two ends of course with this uh, make sure you're connecting it um, with the right end going to the right device this end goes to the controller right here this goes to the controller end right here this other end here with this little ball here goes to the rov side or the drone that's how we have it set up right there all right here's the drone itself look at the front there we've got the 4k camera and the two leds there's three dimming levels for the led maximum of 10 watts each okay color temperature 5k to 55 K or Kelvin rating for these LEDs about 1200 lumens on each side camera is a 4k camera it's got a f2.8 aperture view to view is about 150 degrees um, it's got a 12 megapixel for pictures if you want to take pictures but ultimately you will probably want to take videos with this it's got two motors right at the very top here two motors right here it's got one in the center back here and two in the far back right here let me see here it's got this at the very top here. you can unscrew this and that's for the SD card you've got the connector right in the back right here that's for the cable this special one down here this goes to the claw and the claw mounts right here there's two uh, four screws here to mount the claw that sits right here let's get this connected and test it out before we put it in the water so I have both ends right here and I'm gonna connect this end to the unit right here with the controller I'm gonna plug this side back here and the controller and to get this all working I need a phone to place here all right so the first thing to do is we got to make sure we're in the right frequency whatever your phone supports so you see we have 2.4 gigahertz right here and also the 5g right here and you can push this button to toggle between the two so I can switch that over or I can get that right there and what it's doing is it's broadcasting the signal um, so what we have to do from our phone is we're gonna have to find that SSID and then connect to it and then load the app alright so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna look for chasing right here this is the Wi-Fi I want to connect to alright now that I've connected to this I'm going to turn Bluetooth off just so that it doesn't interfere and then I am going to load the Chasing G01 app okay usually I'll take a few seconds here I'm gonna click no to this um, I just find it that sometimes there's an issue if Bluetooth is left on so I turn that off um, and then I just hit start and when I do that I am connected and I can then put this onto the top here just like this and there you go I have it connected that's how it looks like all right and so right now nothing is working until we drop this unit into the water uh, but let's just look at this really quick to see what we have the menu here the very top you have the compass so if you move the unit around um, the compass changes so as I'm moving the unit here you know depending on the position it'll tell you where it's pointing right now it's pointing is south right here south this gives you an idea of where the unit or the drone is pointed in the water um, up here we have the uh, settings that we can go into and adjust you have your 25 
50, 75, and 100. That's the speed adjustment. Um, if you want it to go faster on your joystick movement, then you will set it to 100%. If you want it to be more uh, slow and subtle, then you can dial it down to 25. Uh, format the card metric is in inches a Wi-Fi switch to 5g which I'm not going to do or you can calibrate calibrate your device and camera you can check the camera stream here and change it to MPJ4 or H20 uh, H264 uh, the IS image stabilization is is on okay the handle, uh, the control, I have it set for whatever it came with, which is Japan. But if you want to, you can change it to the USA. Um, in the manual, it'll tell you how that changes the actual control right here. So by changing that, you're actually changing the joysticks and how the uh, drone moves underwater. Um, to turn the light on, let me just close out of this here. To turn the light on, you do that with the controller right here. This button here turns the light on, okay? And tap it twice, turns it off. If you're under the water and the drone or the underwater drone is not level, you can push this button here to level it. That will level the uh, unit. This here turns the motor on, so when you're ready to go into the water, you push this button to turn the uh, drone on. And what that does is it'll turn the pumps on and lower the unit or the drone under the water all right so if we look at this here at the top of the screen um, we have more settings here at the side your VR your live time-lapse slow motion and light the bottom here it's got the actual uh, drone and you can see uh, you know if it's flat or if it's rotating or if it's pivoting you can see all that here down at the bottom left okay also at the bottom left it'll tell you the temperature and the depth it'll also tell you the lights on or not okay um, other thing is you have video settings that you can go into and if you click right here you can switch between camera or video once you're in video you can go down here to make all the adjustments in terms of ISO um, you know your uh, RGB settings your color tone contrast sharpness mirror um, so there's a lot of stuff in here that you can utilize and at the very top here top right you'll see the battery of the unit and right now I'm at 100% still and uh, it'll give you some information along with your SD card your uh, resolution for the camera and your ISO settings at the very bottom right that is for adding accessories like the claw and if you have that you can connect the claw and connect the cable to the bottom of the drone and that will give you the ability to control it um, but before you do that, you'll have to add that to this unit right here. You would have to add that to the controller. You could do that at the very uh, bottom right here. And once you have it connected, this here controls the claw. You use this to open, open and close the claw with this setting right here. All right, so I have my 150 gallon barrel out here filled it up with some water and I'm gonna try it out so I have this unit set up already and we're gonna put the drone in the water to test it out all right so here's the drone all you gotta do is toss it in the water just like that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unlock this to turn the motor on and as that happens, the unit should go down the water line. Okay, it's under the water. So this side here is what's controlling the up and down movement. So I can go lower by toggling this down. The unit could go all the way down. Or I could bring it up to the surface by doing this.
All right, now this is for up and down, okay? The drone can go down or it could come back up to the surface. Take it back down a little bit. All right, and what I can do is this toggle over here, I can push it forward, backward, or I can kind of turn it left or right. So if I turn left, you can see the unit turning in the water. I'm gonna turn it right. Come backwards right here. All right, so let it focus on that. I can go forward. Okay, and I could go backward. I could turn the light on if I wanted to. That turns the light on right there. Double click to turn the light back off. Go forward. I can turn if I wanted to. Come back. I can come up. I can go down. And if I wanted to tilt the unit at a 45 degree angle, I can do that with this guy over here, this dial right here. I can tilt the unit down or up. Now I have it up right there. It's tilting up. I could change it to tilt down. Okay, now it's tilting down. Okay, I could take it down lower. Okay, so now you can see that it's tilting. Now when it's tilting, like that at 45 degree, the controller lets you know, when this is lit up, it lets you know that the unit is not level to the surface. So if I tap on this, the unit or the drone will automatically sit level again. So if I go forward, so you can see it's still tilted. If I hit this button right here, it levels out. Okay, so now it's leveled. Same thing, if I want to tilt up, and there it is, that's up right there, it's tilting up right now. If I hit the button right here, it's going to auto level. level. Okay. Do it again, tilt up, all right, it's tilting up right now. If I hit the button here, it's gonna level. Bring it up to the surface is this one here. I could bring it all the way up. Then turn it off, lock the motors, and that's it. All right guys, that is it for this video. Thank you for stopping by and watching to the end. If you find this video helpful, feel free to subscribe and like this video. If you have any questions, feel free to drop it down in the comment section below and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.